Hello, guten Abend, how's everybody doing? Uh, the audio is gonna be probably a little bit uh, echoey today because we are actually in my new studio or at least uh, what will become my new studio in I hope a couple of, of weeks. Uh, yeah, how are you doing? I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I gotta be honest that I'm quite excited at the moment because I haven't been live streaming for like I think a year or something like that but I thought it's finally time to more or less yeah get in this new space and try out how everything works. Hendrik yeah thanks for for yeah my, my Christmas tree up here I thought we at least need to have a bit of decoration in here. Uh, hey Tim, hey Nicolas, hey Kaspar, hey Andre, hey Wayne. Yeah, it is really live. It is really live. Yeah, I, I, th I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna start right away because um, yeah. Let's see. I don't. I don't really want to um, have this be going on for for too long. So what we have right here, uh, people are gonna hate it. Some are going to love it. But this is the Creality CR30 belt print or the 3D print mill, uh, which is currently on Kickstarter. Um, as I said, some of you probably not gonna really like that. But anyways, they still sent me, sent me a printer to unbox and uh, to try out. And just due to the reason that this is something that I haven't been well, using and probably most of you haven't been using as well. Um, this is something we're gonna unbox today and I'm still okay that it is a bit, uh, Kickstarter. You guys, maybe just as a small disclaimer in the beginning. So this printer is currently on Kickstarter, you can back it, but backing the printer doesn't mean that you purchase it. You actually just backing the company and you might get this printer as a reward. Um, Looking at Creality, I think they have a, a, a pretty good, yeah, they usually deliver on their claims, even though the uh, CR6 SE or how uh, it was called, uh, wasn't the back, uh, best Kickstarter uh, launch. But anyways, um, yeah, some people don't like Creality, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, anyways, so. I think we gonna crack this thing right open and see if we can get it to print. I'm really excited. Um, it is currently, uh, I don't know how, how much is it currently on Kickstarter. I think it's around like seven or 600 bucks on Kickstarter um, as like the early bird special. If you will buy it afterwards in retail, it's probably going to be like around a thousand bucks. Um, Tom is asking, what slicer do you use for this printer? So this is still one of the problems with those belt printers because there isn't a lot of software around that you can use to feed the printer with G-code. Um, there is Black Belt uh, Cura, which is just a modified version of Cura that is able to um, that is able to generate G-code for a tilted Z-axis um, and actually Idea Maker have teased this week that they are also going to be um, implementing belt 3D printing in their Idea Maker software, which is pretty nice. All right, so let's crack this thing open. William is saying, I also wrote a simple plugin for other slicers. That is really nice. Um, so I have to be totally honest, um, belt 3D printing still kind of screws with my head because I'm still not 100%, I don't know, comfortable with the design constraints that you're having in here or that you're having when you're using a, a belt 3D printer. But this is also one of the reasons why I'm really excited to use this machine, see what design restrictions it has or what actually what possibilities it could also give you. And I think for my part also what that means later for 
uh, the strength of your parts if they are printed kind of at a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> okay, so this unit right here is still a beta unit. It's probably not going to be like 100% the version that you are going to be getting if you're backing the Kickstarter or if you're buying it later on retail, but I think it's already pretty close. There will be some, I guess, uh, modifications made uh, to the belt and of course to the software or the firmware. Um, and it's kind of a good thing that kind of a lot of reviewers got this unit well, during the Kickstarter or even before the Kickstarter, because Creality can now take their feedback um, to uh, improve the machine uh, for you as a backer. Dexter, thank you for the five bucks. Hi Stefan, I absolutely love your content, especially the deep dive into material properties and unusual printing techniques and materials. Hope this helps. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, pretty usual packing. Um, if you ever bought, bought a, a Chinese 3D printer or a Creality 3D printer, you are, I think, for sure going to, well, be knowing those um, black foam pads. So, let's take them off. I'm really sorry, guys, due to, like, due to like uh, contact restrictions i'm currently alone right here in the studio so it could be a little bit messy working on chat and also working on the printer and talking to you so uh yeah please uh please be okay if i might be missing one or the other um one or the other con uh, comment okay so what do we have in here manual which also already looks really like finished uh, and we'll take a look at that in a second because uh, this is what we will be using to set this thing up. Then we have the usual roll of PLA filament, 200 gram spool. Um, I didn't really like Creality's filament that came with a CR6 SE so I probably just be putting that away and I have some other materials. Uh, right here for us to work with. Um, we have the spool holder. Then, how do I get this thing out of the box? Let's see. All right, this is a part, I think probably, um, probably from the tilted system. Let me see. Uh, what's out of bed? Cool. All right, so. Um, I guess we should already be able to take the gantry out of the box. Kaspar is asking, when is the next episode of the Melt Zone coming out? I hope pretty soon. I have been really, really busy over the last months due to renovation in here, having a baby and having to work quite a lot. But I hope that there's going to be a new episode um, being released soon. Okay, so this is kind of weird now. Why can't I take this out of the box? So there are some wires. Hmm. Um, so there, there is this bit of wires that is kind of stuck below the foam. So uh, we'll see if we need to take out part of the other foam at first. Carl is asking, can I buy a CNC Kitchen t-shirt? Yes, you can. There is a link to the new merch store down in the description. Um, and we don't only have the CNC Kitchen logo, but we also have a really cool design of my 3D printing test hook. So uh, yeah, check that out. Links in the description. <clears throat> um, a couple of guys are saying, yeah, the Bowden is kind of long. Yes, it is actually kind of long. It, it looks kind of similar to something like a, a CR10 or something like that, but that's, that's definitely going to be an issue. And it's probably also going to be interesting if there will be conversions to uh, actually convert one of these into a direct drive printer. Uh, but let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the packing seems to be a little bit complicated. I'm kind of scared that I dropped something. Um, there are still some 
things left in the foam so I shouldn't I shouldn't miss them and there we are um, just just give me one second uh, let's see how I can get this out of the box without dropping it Ugh. this is a really heavy beast mm. Open the box from the bottom. Uh, it's going to work some. Uh, there's the screen. So, I guess here we go. Oh man, that looks really, really nice. Uh, let me try to give you a better view on what I'm having right here. Uh, license to drive is asking his neighbor wants a 3d printer um, he's going to steer him towards a Prusa mini uh, would an endo 3 pro be okay as well i think getting well i think getting started with 3d printing the the Prusa is still the better jo choice but it got more expensive so uh, there we go uh, so it it depends if if he's if he knows what he's doing I, I think an ender 3 would be totally fine but if he's totally new to 3d printing I guess the Prusa is going to be the better choice oh Tom's here hey Tom thanks for joining uh, is that a Sony A6400? No, that's a Lumix something something. I don't know. It's already pretty old. Okay. Uh, so what do we have right here? So we have the belt system, which should be pre-aligned. There is a heated plate below here. Um, there is a screen that we are going to attach, attach on the side and then there is the gantry system that I have in my hands right here and I'll be opening the manual and be taking a look how we assemble that thing to get it going. Um, okay so just give me one second I still need to pick up what's in here. Ah. So there's a secret compartment in here that you need to open and there is a full-size SD card which is pretty nice. Uh, I don't know, I prefer full-size SD cards in comparison to the micro SD ones just because it's less fiddly to, uh, to work with them. Uh, David is asking, what's the belt made out of? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe you can check on the Kickstarter. Starter. I thought it is some kind of a nylon. So it, it is a really fine weave structure. Maybe I can give you a better look. So there you go. So it's it's a really fine woven structure. Um, it's sewn together at some position on the belt. I think we're gonna see that later as soon as we uh, as we turn it on. Um, it feels kind of slippery. I don't know if the, the printed material is just grabbing into the surface by really um, digging into the woven structure or if you have really adhesion between, uh, for example, your PLA and, um, and the, the belt itself. Okay, so let's see. Um, so what we have right here is the manual. Let's take a look at that. So it's version 1.1. 1 
which is already nice. We have notes, it's in Chinese and English. There is the introduction, uh, what are the parts called. There is the list of parts, the bill of materials. I hope we have a proper power cable. Yeah, we have a proper German power cable with us. And yeah, I guess let's start and install the profile brackets. Cool. Um, uh, let's see, full. There we go. So, um, I think I'm still missing one of those brackets right here because it's telling me that I should have two of those. Ah, yeah. There was another secret compartment down here and there is our other profile bracket. Okay, so let's see, it's kind of weird, I, s I still need to figure out if there's a way how I can detach the gantry from the printer, but it's going to work out some way. Uh, belt changes color, but the print doesn't. Okay, so uh, we have two of those, how are they called, profile brackets. There is one with um, that's the filament runout sensor that goes on the right side and the other one goes on the left side. There is, there are some tools delivered with the machine but just for convenience I think I'm gonna be using my own. Cool, so we need to use the M5 by 12 screws. So again, this, this does already look like a really finished, finished product because we have all the packing, um, the, the, the plastic bags are marked. So we have our M5 by 12 screws in here. Hey, Esker. So how many do we need? Um, four. That's five. Uh, actually really nice stainless steel bolts. I kind of like that. That's the wrong one. Uh, where did I put my tools? Can, any, can anyone tell me where it just... Ah, uh, there we go. All right, so uh, let's put this one right here on the right side. Still kind of nervous and shaky. I hope you guys can excuse that. Uh, sorry for the echoey sound again, as I said. Um, this right here is still kind of the construction side. Uh, I hope that really the new studio is going to be finished in a couple of weeks time but there's still no no floor in here um, and i just thought that today is gonna be just like a nice occasion to uh, kind of enjoy the huge the really largely bigger space uh, that i now finally have Damn it. Uh, so what, I don't know, those, those screw holes or those through holes are pretty tight. Um, I don't know if they did that, um, that the screws align the brackets or if this is still like 
some of the problems that they that they have and might be fixing in in one of those beta units Olmi is asking would you buy a mark 2 and not a mark 3 just a question if you're talking about a prusa mark 2 and mark 3 uh, honestly, I have both of them. I really enjoy using both of them. The only real downside that I personally see on my Mark II is that it is a bit, it is significantly louder. So if you don't mind the printing noise, uh, you can definitely go for Mark II. Uh, printing results are going to be basically the same. Uh, Mark III is it's heating up a little bit faster and it is way more quiet. This is really one of the advantages. I am saying it's a treadmill. Yeah, it, it looks really similar to a treadmill, to be honest. I don't know if, if we are able to spin that up uh, to put a cat on there and <laughs> see if we can use it as a, as a cat treadmill. All right, so uh, this is the first step. Next step is going to be installing the XY axis belt assembly. Um, so we again need M5 by 18 screws. I just need to double check M5 by 12 that we use the right screws. Yeah, this is fine. Christian is asking, you have a lot of printers, do you use Octoprint? Um, in the past I have been using it way more than I'm using it today. I don't know, just maybe because I don't print that much anymore. Uh, but I still really enjoy using it. So if you need to like remote monitor your prints, uh, yeah, go ahead, buy yourself a Raspberry Pi. and. Uh, and put Octoprint on it. It's really simple. What else do we need? M5 by 8... M5 by 18, M5 by 12. Those are probably going to be the black ones. <laughs> baby treadmill, haha. <laughs> uh, I, I think our baby wouldn't really like it at the moment because it's it's still kind of Im immobile <laughs> we'll see we'll see okay m5 by 45 m5 by 45 and m5 by 12 that looks good so how are we going to assemble that let's see that we don't uh, like screw that up uh, so the motor is going to be on top, the feeder is going to be right here on the left side. Uh, and you guys are not seeing what I'm doing. Sorry for that. Okay. Let's maybe put this in, in full mode again. Um, I think this is still... All right, so this goes on here. This goes right here. <laughs> Treadmill for babies might actually be a fun way to teach them to walk. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, I think my wife's not going to like that. So um, sorry. Let's see, what are we starting with? Let's, let's start with the hexagonal flathead screws. And they are going 20, 20, they're going in here. This is again the wrong one. Seems very sturdy. Yeah, the construction is, actually looks kind of sturdy. Uh, the, like the triangular design. Is really nice. It kind of reminds me uh, on how was it called? Yeah, one of the first 3D printers, one of the first rep reps that also was 
kind of designed in a, in a similar way. L. Moses, thank you so much for the 25 bucks. Awesome, thank you for the stream. You're welcome. Uh, tips for you, saying end of three with a tilt. Uh, well, I think it's a little bit more advanced than just an end of three, but, but we are going to find out. Uh, let me check that I don't put the screws in the wrong location. So right here we have another three. Mendel, there you go. Yeah, sorry. I'm not really the best person in multitasking. Uh, so if I need to screw this printer together, read chat at the same time and also, I don't know, kind of kind of uh, need, to, <laughs> need to talk to you guys. Uh, that's screwing up my head. El Moses, thank you very much for becoming a research assistant. Well, welcome. Okay, so that's all right. Let's put this one in here. I would say Ender 5 without two profiles, yeah, and a belt attached on the bottom. So you are kind of right in that, in that regard because the, the motion system looks pretty similar. So uh, when I'm finished right here, I'll, I'll turn it around and we can take a look at it. ET is asking, what is the print bed made out of? I don't know what the belt is made out of, to be honest. It is a woven structure. Um, some say it's, it's a nylon thing. I don't know. Clemmer is asking, what are practical applications for a Tilto 3D printer like this? Um, infinite length printing, kind of infinite length, but if you're doing props or something like that, you can basically print out three meter long um, swords and knives and stuff like that. Um, continuous 3D printing, so you can set up the printer that it just puts out one part after the, after the other and you basically can make a farm for, uh, a farm for banshees, <laughs> something like that. Morten, thank you very much for the 50 Danish crowns. Thanks a lot. Liebe Grüße from your neighbor up north. Oh, is it? Yeah, Danish crowns. Sorry. Uh, Edmund is asking, hey Stefan, how, are you, how happy are you with your hook? Uh, I think you're talking about the Polymaker uh, contest. I'm. I'm honestly kind of happy that I'm still in uh, the competition. Uh, there are some pretty interesting designs already around. And oh, did I put... Give me one second. Did I put... That goes on here. Should that be on the outside? I guess that should be on the outside. Okay, so the assembly instructions are not 100% clear on that. Damn it. I think so. Um, part of the, the wiring harness is, is still in here and I think that needs to go on the outside. So let me just... Oh, damn it. We need to open that up again. Sorry for the delay. Uh, does it already come with a 32-bit board? I think it does. Um, not 100% sure about that. So uh, I think you can read it on the Kickstarter page. Just remove the front right bar. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's easier than removing the whole motion system. William is saying, yeah, it's 32 bits. So I think this one's also going to be 32 bit, even though it wouldn't be really necessary for a printer like that because the, 
the calculation of the moves is, is not any harder as with a normal Cartesian 3D printer but still it just gives you a little bit more headroom for newer Marlin releases for example. Okay, so we have that now on the outside. Let's see, that looks good. Uh, Andrew is saying the belt is an upgraded material from the original Beta. Yes, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but as far as what I have seen from others like Teaching Tech and Angus from Makers Muse, they had a, a belt that was way rougher. So the wove, weaving, wove, something like that, um, just was way rougher. Um, this one looks pretty smooth and maybe that is better for well part adhesion that the parts don't stick on the print beds too much um, but yeah we'll, we'll see how that works. Tobias is asking how much is one? Um, I think the current Kickstarter price is something like 700 US dollars the retail price is going to be something like a thousand dollars later on. Carl, thanks for the five pounds. You and Tom should get Naomi on the melt zone. Yeah, we're thinking about inviting like more regular guests on the show. It's maybe going to uh, be a bit min being. It's probably going to be a bit more interesting for the viewers. So let's not forget forget the rest of the bowls. So we have the long ones, two of the 45 millimeter ones that go right here on the top. OX4D is saying a thousand dollars is a hard sell. Um, not really to be honest because before the 3D print mill kind of the next belt 3D printer that you could buy was the black belt and that is around like 10 or 14,000 um, bucks. There is also currently another uh, belt 3D printer on Kickstarter from a German factory. I think it's called iFactory. Um, they are having pretty similar, pretty similar prices and they're I think probably going to be a, a really interesting competitor to Creality. And at least they say on their Kickstarter, I think that they are going to deliver before Christmas, which is not too far to go. Um, does the wheels have the same quality as other Creality printers? Yeah, I don't really see any, any difference on here. Uh, just let me check that I don't miss out on anything. M5 by 12, 22. Right here from the bottom. It's... Let's see, let's see. So uh, the manual is actually saying that there needs to be one screw or, at least, or, or I think two that go in here from the bottom. Ah yeah, there we go. Let's just turn that around. Um, yeah, secondary. So, okay, so there is still one screw going in here and one screw going in here. Frozen 55 is asking if I have a video specifically on designing parts. I don't really have a like sorry for the word bloody beginner tutorial on 3d printing. Uh, maybe check out 
other channels like Maker, Maker's Muse or I think Tom even did a, a really nice series on like basic 3D printing. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Uh, focus CNC kitchen. Yeah, I should focus. Sorry, I'm, I'm really easily disturbed by others. So yeah, hot silicone feet. Uh, they are not too hard to be honest. Okay, so uh, let me show you. Damn it. I hope that I'm not going to ruin the screen. <laughs> that would be kind of a premature end to the live stream. So let me show you what we have right here. Uh... So this is the motion system. So we have the usual belts, but interestingly, for once, those are genuine gate belts. So really nice quality ones. And they are, they are a bit wider, wider than the usual ones that, yeah, that we see. I think usually we have six millimeter belts and those are eight millimeter ones. So this is a really nice, nice upgrade. So we have a core XY configuration right here. Um, let's go back. We have one stepper motor right here, one stepper motor right here. The belts seem to be pretty aligned. That is nice. Tension is okay, I guess. Hot end looks really interesting. I it looks basically like. It looks basically like just a, a regular Ember 3 or CR10 hot end. Um, it's just a little bit squished down that we have everything right here on the end. Okay. Um, Leo is asking, tensioning the belts. Uh, let's see, is there, yeah, there's actually, there's actually a really nice mechanism for tensioning the belts. Let me show you that. Uh, I'll take the camera. Sorry for the shaking. So there is a screw up here uh, that you can tighten from here to adjust the tension on this stepper motor and the tension on this stepper motor. Okay. Um, all right, let's continue with the script. So, install the spool holder. That doesn't look too hard. Let's just uh, turn that around again. It's a really heavy machine. So, we have the spool holder right here. Spool holder right here, and we need two M5 T nuts and two M5 by eight millimeter screws. So we have M5 by eight millimeters and T nuts. Uh, Brick Pixel is saying I can't tell if it's HBOT or Core XY. I'm pretty sure this is Core XY, but correct me if I'm wrong. So I think it's not the same configuration as you have, for example, on an Ender 5, because the Ender 5 is not Core XY. Okay, so where does it go? Belt seems to be pretty loose to me. No, it's really, really tight. It's really, really tight. Um, I can't complain here. Okay, so. Okay, 
This printer looks as if it has been already assembled once. Um, I don't think that it's, it's a, a cherry picked unit. I just think that they don't have those many printers and the ones that they're currently shipping out to reviewers, they really make sure that everything works, which is okay in my opinion. Okay. So install the display. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea before I ruin it. Uh, people were asking if it came with its own slicer. I haven't checked the SD card yet, but I'm quite sure that you're using Black Belt uh, Cura for that. So that's a modified version of Cura for the Black Belt 3D printer, which is also a, yeah, it's also an infinite, it's, it's also a belt printer with a 45 degrees tilted axis. Okay, screen should go down here. Let's move the camera a little bit. <laughs> um, so what do we need? Uh, we need another, need more hex. Oh, sorry. We need more bolts, M5 by 8, and a couple of more T-nuts. Um, oh, sorry for the peel. I ruined it. I'm sorry. Oh. Let's do it once again. <laughs> Joshua, thanks for the two dollars. Appreciate it. I meant the Core XY belts being loose. Yes, that could be the case, but I'm, to be honest, I'm currently not, I think I'm not going to tighten them because I think they are, um, they are tight enough. And you also, you also need to Keep in mind that this, those belts are way longer than an, on a normal Cartesian 3D printers with way more rollers and that just adds a quite significant amount of, of flexibility to the system. Dylan is asking, can you use a standard slicer? No, you can't. Um, there are modified slicer versions around that you need to use for those printers and this is still kind of a disadvantage at the moment because you don't really have that many alternatives and the black belt Cura is still based on Cura like uh, 3.6 which is already pretty old so you won't be having the the latest features but idea maker um, just teased this week that they are also going to release um, or include they're also going to uh, implement belt 3D printing in IdeaMaker. <laughs> okay, so we have attached the screen. Let's continue right here. We are basically already done. So let's see. I think this is kind of weird because we still need to plug in the filament runout sensor. Ah, okay. So it says right here, connect the broken detection line. Okay, translation is not the best at the moment. Let's see. Where are the end stops? Okay. So there is a Y cable. This right here is still an end stop. I'm no there's one in stop. I'm not sure if we need to install them or if this is just like a spare. I hope this is a spare. After the, the display is installed, please connect the cable, connect the Y limit line here. So is there still something that we need to plug in? Uh, 
let's turn this over. Uh, William is saying, yeah, it's a spare. That's nice. Okay, so this is the Y limit. So that connects right here. Ah, no, sorry. It doesn't connect right here. That connects right here. So I just plugged in this cable right here. Is there something else that we need to do? Insert the Teflon tube. Okay, we still need to do that. Connect the broken detection. Okay, I think most of the other parts that I still have right here lying on my desk are still uh, spares. So that's kind of nice. Assembly seems to be pretty simple. Okay, there is still one cable left. Ah, okay, that's for the filament runout detection. Okay, this goes in here. All right, and then the last thing that we need to do is plug in the bottom tube and something which is which I haven't seen on any other Creality 3D printer so far, but I don't know, I have all of the, I don't have all of the most current ones. Um, this is a Bontex style uh, extruder. So we have a dual driven Bowden extruder right here, which is kind of nice, um, which might also help maybe just a little bit with the long Bowden tube that we have. So pretty cool. I don't, I don't know if those are genuine, uh, genuine, Bontech gears as for example the Prusa is using, but they do look pretty similar. Print the Excalibur. Uh, I don't know if I'm printing the Excalibur, at least, well, at least not today. What I re would really like to do is print uh, the Zelda Master Sword at some point. Did I already tell you that I have new merchandise? Nah, doesn't focus. Okay, so Bowden tube is in here. Let's also take a look at the extruder from the other side uh, or at the hot end from the other side. So, as I said, this is a custom design. Ooh. Are those SLS3 printed parts? Um, this right here looks really interesting. So those are custom fan shrouds for, for the way they need it for this printer to work well. And from the texture, they really feel like SLS 3D printed parts. Um, Please excuse me, but I think I will, I will just disassemble one of those to take a look at them. Uh, this might be, they are, will probably later be made from, uh, well, using injection molding, but for, but for one of these prototypes, SLS 3D printing, so sintering nylon powder with a laser might be a great option. So look at that. That's cool. Yeah, this is definitely SLS 3D printed. Cool. I appreciate that. Um, I would have rather thought that they might just be using a 3D printed, well, a, a FDM 3D printed part right here. But this is, they went all the way and printed it in SLS. Cool. So yeah, let's assemble it again.
Yeah, I don't. I don't think that SLM would be the right right option for a shroud. It's this one. SLS 3D printing is a really nice technology because you can print almost anything without support structure because the parts are just held because they're embedded in powder. Okay, cool. So, I think the next step is going to be turning that machine on. Uh, let's just clean up a little bit right here. So uh, we still need the power cable. I will also still keep the tools because we might need to adjust a couple of things before we can get started. So, but we don't need the spares. We don't need that cable. Screws, screws. What brands are your screwdrivers? Those are Vera. Really, really nice ones. I think German brand. Mm, I love them. I really, really love them. Uh, not a sponsor. <laughs> Even though I have two, two sets of those. Okay, cool. Oscar is saying power supply settings 230 volts. I will check that, but since it's coming from China, I would assume that they already put it to the right setting because I think they also have 230 volts. But yeah, it's already set to the proper setting 230 volts. Uh, wrong direction. <laughs> never assume they set it correctly. Uh, I honestly, I never so far blew up a printer due to a wrong setting. Okay, um, I put the manual away, which is probably not the best thing. Uh, let's see, where does it plug in? <laughs> where does it plug in? Ah, there we go. Uh, please excuse me. I need to go on the other side of the camera. All right. Let's give you the best view on the screen. Here we go. And let's hope it doesn't blow up. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Oop. Let's Sorry. Focus. All right. 3D print mill. So the sensors seem to be working. Uh, let me check the manual, what we need to do next. Creality says it can print TPU. Yeah, if you have a, a stiff TPU, oh, we still need to insert, insert the Bowden tube into the hot end. Sorry guys, I forgot to plug in the Bowden tube on the right side. Okay, let's push it all the way down and lock it again in place. It 
so what do we need to do? Uh, leveling, move the x-axis All right, so let's read through the leveling um, instructions because this is the next step. First, move the x-axis to the contact part between the nozzle and the belt. Slightly press the nozzle on the belt. Push the two limit switches against the x-sliding block to lock the limit. Oh my goodness. Ah, okay. Uh, let's... Can we turn that printer around so that you can also see what I'm doing? Yeah, I guess. Okay, so I guess the next thing that we need to do is, is make sure that the level is all right. So it says that we should move the nozzle all the way down uh. mm. I don't know if that's better okay Slightly press the nozzle onto the belt. So we move it down. I think that's all right. And then we need to move those end stops right here a little bit further up. Let's see. Okay. Thanks for the 10 bucks license to drive. 10 pounds, oh my goodness. Thanks for the 10 euros, Christian. Love your 3D printing, test videos, comparison filament and print methods. Here's towards future, future filament tests. Thank you so much. Also, thanks for all the very thorough videos you do. I re it really is my favorite type of videos. Very useful. Thank you so much, so much Christian and license to drive. Okay, so also on this side right here, Let's move the end stop a little bit further up. See? Oh yeah, there we go. Until it touches this bracket down here. Okay. This screw right here is a bit loose. I don't know if we also... <sighs> okay, next step. Push the limit switches against the X sliding block to lock the limit. That's what we currently done. Uh, did. Press back on the screen to get the printer back to the origin. Adjust the Y and stop adjusting the screws ac uh, according to the position of the nozzle relative to the belt. After back to the origin in order to make sure the nozzle contacting with the belt rightly. Then tighten the Y axis end stop screw. Leveling finished. Uh, so I guess what we need to do is the following. We need to home the printer. So I do that using the screen. Uh, screen. Auto home. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I could show you that. Uh, da, da, da. Let's turn this around again. So I think it was already 
pretty well aligned and I now really misaligned everything. But I just followed the instructions, so don't hate me for that. Okay. Okay, so our task is now to get the nozzle very close to the bed in the home position. So let's home it again. Motion auto home. So we still see that we are basically like a millimeter above the belt, uh, which means that we need to move the uh, optical end stop a little bit further down. So there's adjustment, there is an adjustment screw down here. I just turn it a couple of times and let's home it again. Motion, auto home. Uh, we are almost there, just a tiny bit more. Motion, auto home, teeny tiny bit more. That's not the worst level. Well, it, it's a pain to level, but it's n not the worst leveling system. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty good because we are just like barely touching the belt now. Um, I'll disable the steppers that I'm able to move the gantry by hand which might show us how how much we really we really rub over the surface but that looks all right. Cool perfect uh, we are, I guess we are even further to uh, getting our first print. Uh, so the next thing is loading the filament. I won't be using the Creality filament that came with the printer because I had really bad experience with their filament on the CR6. So, uh, I just purchased a couple of really nice materials from Das Filament this week and maybe you guys can decide what we should use for our first print. So I have finally a roll of Tom's 3D Infinity Blue. We have a multicolor polar light and a multicolor galaxy filament. I don't know, what shall we use? I guess Tom's filament might be might give us the the best contrast between the belt and the print. So it's blue, 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 blue. Tom's galaxy blue. Yeah, I guess we're gonna take use Tom's material. I never actually printed with this, and since I usually just have I don't know technical filaments at home in in really generic colors. I thought at the beginning of this week I should finally purchase some some nice colors. So Tom's Infinity Blue it is. Ta -da. All right. So, let's preheat the printer. Temperature Preheat PLA. Um, I will be preheating the bed as well, just for the sake of time. Let's move the print head a little. It's 
Is that working? Why aren't you moving? Ah. Yeah. All right. Um, Hexel's asking, will the belt be heated all over its surface? Um, as far as I know, the belt will be heated right, I think up to this point right here. And then it will cool down because that's important that the part releases um, before the bend right here comes. So, uh, you, so that you can use the printer for this like infinity, infinity printing. Which just brings me again to Tom's filament, which is I guess the perfect filament for that because it's infinity blue for the infinity Z axis 3D printer. <laughs> what a coincidence. All right. Um, yeah, I don't think that we need to read through the procedure how to insert the filament into this 3D printer. Uh, so we get, push it through here, through the dual hopped feed gears, all the way through the long Bowden tube. And let's see if it gets out of the nozzle. Andrew is asking, did you get the roller extension? No, I did not. So um, probably not real infinity 3D printing for me. <laughs> okay, so they did print white filament before and there we have Tom's infinity blue. Um, also the print bed seems to be preheated already. So we are at 55 degrees on the bed. Okay, maybe this is kind of interesting. So um, the printer, the printer says that it's fully heated, and also the print bed is pre uh, is preheated. It is preheated in this section, but it is not preheated in this section right here. So probably starting from this point already. The part, will the part will slowly release, that it really finally releases, uh, finally releases um, right here at the, at the end of the roller. Start printing. So the manual tells me that there is a Creality belt, which is probably just a renamed installer for the, the Black Belt 3D printing software. Um, I hope that there's also going to be some G code on the included SD card that we can install right away. I'm just thinking um, on the orientation I should um, mm -hmm. I should put the printer that you guys are able to properly see what's what's going on. Okay. Let's do it this way. Uh, let me get the SD card. that I put somewhere where I don't find it anymore. Uh, there is no SD card. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, SD card. 
Let's see what's on it. Print form from cards. Software and drivers use a model 3D printer. Okay. My Chinese is not the best. It says Yuan Tzu, AU2, AU sorry, that was a mix up with German, and Chuan.gcard. Um, maybe let's put the SD card into my. into my laptop uh, that we can just take a look at um, that we can take a look at the g-code and, and figure out what is not going to take that long okay okay let me make some space on the desk There's the SD card. Um, just give me one second. So the G code is probably going to look a little bit skewed just due to the reason Come on. <laughs> All right, so first model that is a 3D printy, uh, 3D printy, 3D Benchy at an angle. Um, so that was. Yuan. Let's take a look at AU2. Come on. See, just taking a couple of seconds to load. Uh, so this is not doing anything. Ah, there we go. Oh, okay. So that's that's the crocodile. This is also probably going to be a a really long print. Uh, oh yeah, that's that's actually 180 megabytes of of data for the crocodile. M maybe something for tomorrow. Ah, okay. And this right here is a really simple part let's maybe start with that one and just see how how it turns out so the last one that was uh yuan Tzu. okay I guess just with like with any regular 3D printer, um, it's still running. It's still using one of the old screens. Uh, I don't really mind those because I rather have an old monochrome screen on my printer than a well that is working properly than a new colorful one that is just horrible to use. Okay, so yeah, let's print this one. Ah, there, thank you. Okay, so start print, yes, start printing. So uh, it will heat the 
printing platform up to 60 degrees Celsius. And the nozzle is currently still set to 285 degrees Celsius. I, I guess it's going to change that as well after the bed preheating, but if not, but if not, um, I just crank, ah yeah, now no, we are at 200 degrees for the nozzle and that's, that's pretty fine for PLA. Okay, so almost 200 degrees Celsius. Let's see. I really hope that the leveling job that we did is sufficient. Uh, Dazzle asks, how long will it take? I would say around an hour, depends on I guess depends on the size of the model. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Oh, there we go. So just, well, Bell 3D printing is still messing with my mind because not all of the the rules that I, well, used to work with for normal Cartesian 3D printers apply for a Bell 3D printer. And this is for once just the size of the, the size of the, the first layer, the thickness. So, and also, and also, uh, sorry, my head is really messed up. The, the thickness of the first layer and also um, printing restrictions like overhang angles and something like that. I really need to, to wrap my head around those rules at some point pretty soon. Um, I guess you guys might know that I'm usually really concerned with 3D printing noise. Um, the power supply, so what I can hear is the power supply, but it's not too bad, it's not really windy, at least at the moment. Um, probably also because the, um, the heated bed is not too big, so they don't need a really beefy printing platform. Um, the hot end cooling fan, just as any of Creality's hot end cooling fan, is a little bit noisy, but the two cooling fans that we have on, the, on the, the left and the right side of the hot end, they're not too bad. So I would not be too uncomfortable having uh, this printer in my office for, for a bit of testing. What we do not have is like stepper noise. So I'm pretty sure they're using silent dynamic stepper motor drivers. Let's just move that at some location where you are able to see me. Okay, cool. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Oh, I love macros. Okay. So, this, oh, all right. Okay, so the distance to the print platform was probably too big and for that reason the material didn't properly adhere. I guess that's uh, back to the drawing board or back to setting the level of the sensor. Okay. The interesting thing is probably going to be, so if you have an, an, a normal Cartesian 3D printer and your print releases at some point during printing, you are always away from the printing platform. So there's no way that the parts gonna adhere back again on the print plate. In here, basically every new layer will have contact or kind of contact with a printing platform. So I don't know if, if a printing setup like this would be able to, to recover from 
parts of it like getting ripped off the uh, the print platform um, one thing which I probably also forgot was um, properly tightening those bolts right here I don't think that this was the the final problem I just think that we need to move it a little bit closer to the print platform let's just see okay uh, this time I will be tightening the bolts okay okay so let's see if that's better <laughs> And I also don't really have any clue how good parts usually adhere to this type of, of print platform. Print form cards. Okay, let's do it again. Um, yeah, let's zoom a little bit out. Uh, you don't have to use supports in belt printers. Yes, yes, you do have to use supports. They're just different different rules that apply to a skewed C-axis in comparison to conventional like Cartesian 3D printers. Andrew is asking, will it work with the pellets too? Um, for the moment, I don't think so, uh, but I could see the possibility uh, that it's also going to work with a pallet system. Uh, the question is just how do you manage purge blocks and stuff like that. Um, if belt printers are becoming more popular in the future, at least they are getting cheaper right now, um, I am really hoping that we see also improvements in softwares and processes. Okay, so leveling, uh, perch block, and this is the new line. I can't really say if it's closer to the print platform or not, but we'll see, we'll see. Let me give you a better view. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it looks the same, but I'm quite sure that I at least moved the end stop quite a bit down. So, uh, fingers crossed. Uh, what's the second camera you're using to see the printer? So, the one that you're currently seeing is like the, uh, the macro camera. That is a Panasonic Lumix GX80, which I bought this was actually the first camera, camera that I bought when I started this channel right here. Um, um, viewers are discussing a little bit about if you need to kind of coat the belt with a material that it sticks better. I th well, I'm not sure if you need to do that, uh, just because I don't have any experience with that kind, of system, uh, that kind of a system, but this is definitely something I'm going to, to explore in the next couple of, couple of weeks. Um, the question previously was, what are the applications for a printer that, like that? And maybe even to start with the question, 
if you're new to 3D printing, should you buy a belt printer? Uh, well, for once, the belt printer is pretty expensive or more expensive than, it, than for example, an Ender 3 or something like that. Uh, it definitely, I think, has its downsides. Um, print quality might not be as, as superb. Um, the, the design restrictions that you have might be a little bit more complicated, but you also have the advantage that you can print really long parts. If you have these additional rollers or if you need to print out one part of after another and always have the same part, this, this might be an option. So, uh, to be totally honest, if I would recommend somebody their first 3D printer, I would probably not recommend a belt 3D printer. Just because the, let's say, the community is not that big, it's more complicated, it's, it's less well known, software is not that common, but we'll see, we'll see. So the part seems to be sticking better. I do not dare touching it to, to uh, check the adhesion. Uh, so let's just, let's just keep printing and see how it turns out. Meanwhile, while this is printing, uh, if, if you guys enjoy my t-shirt and maybe also one of those cups, uh, check out our new merch store down in the description. Uh, we have some really cool designs in there. So maybe gift yourself something for Christmas. How high can you print with this 3D printer? Um, the limit for the y-axis, oh, you gotta check the Kickstarter page. I am not 100% sure about the stats. I guess I would say something like 20, 25 centimeters, so 250 millimeters, but don't really um, don't really quote me on that. The print quality seems seems really okay. Um, I don't know. There is. I hope that I don't crash anything. Uh, there is one corner right here that just stands up a little. Um, but this again is me being totally confused about. Is that now an overhang or not? I'm pretty sure this is an overhang, so curling of the edges might be, might be quite common or might be quite normal. But as I said, I still need to find a way or I still need to, to research this printer to finally be able to wrap around my head on, uh, on design restrictions and how that thing really works. Robin, it's detached. I don't think that it detached. Did it detach? Oh yeah, it detached. Damn it. Yeah, but I think just a little bit right here on, on that corner. Um, if the rest of the part is, is holding well in place, we just, we just keep going. Lagovitz, thanks for the 10 bucks. Thanks for your tests across all of the years. Hope you will test annealing carbon fiber PLA. Uh, yeah, I, I will definitely try out annealing carbon fiber material. If it's carbon fiber PLA, uh, I am not sure. Maybe rather carbon fiber nylon. S yeah, hey. Scott, uh, so Scott is saying, yeah, straight wall is a 45 degree overhang and this is just, so curling of the edge, as you see it right here, might be quite normal. Um, one thing that I'll probably do, I'll just raise the temperature of the build platform by five degrees so that we are at 65 degrees Celsius. Um, that might improve adhesion a little bit. Uh, 
um, baby step X. The interesting question now, but I won't be messing around with those settings, is there I can do baby baby stepping now on the screen, but which axis do I need to baby step in order to get better adhesion for all of the the next layers that come right here? Yeah, Daniel is saying the two fans might be cooling too fast um, for warping. That could also be the case. At least that's that's not really hap Well, that, at least that's not really helping. Um, let me try to get you a a different angle on the print so that it doesn't get too boring. Mm. Let's see it. how much cable do I still have. Um, uh, Hexel is asking, do all nozzles fit these printers? Uh, I am quite sure that a normal E3D nozzle would not fit that printer just because it needs to get really really close to the print platform and since it's at an angle um, you need to have a, a nozzle with quite a sharp tip. The usual Creality nozzles, so the, I think it's called the Mark 8 nozzles, they have this uh, tip that should be working since for, ex for, the, um, for the E3D nozzles for example they have the hex quite close to the tip I'm quite sure that they will not be working for, for this setup right here. Um, okay, so just give me one second. I will try to give you a better angle and hopefully not mess the print. Mess up the print. No! Okay, I unfortunately Sorry, <laughs> damn it. Um, so I unfortunately pushed pause of the print, but I think we will be able to. Continue, sorry guys. Okay. Let's take that filament. Okay, sorry. I think we are back in the game. Are we? Okay, so the nozzle is currently still heating. No, the print released. Damn it. Okay, I messed it up. Yeah, that's that's all on me. But I'm still curious if so we need to stop that again. I'm still curious why the part doesn't properly adhere to the belt. Is it just because is it because Is it because the nozzle is not close enough, but we have like a really good indentation of the belt on the part itself? Or is it due to the fans or is it due to the belt itself that it is not happy that PLA sticks on it? Um. Okay, so what are we going to do? I think I will just maybe slightly decrease again the distance of the, the nozzle to the bed 
and then we when we continue printing I will also increase the print platform temperature by uh, five degrees no we will not be super gluing it uh, get it wipe with IPA um, I can wipe the belt but then you w will need to give me a minute to fetch that down from my my old office okay Okay, so that's all right. Give me like one second and I'll get some IPA that we can wipe the belt a little. I will be back. Maybe you're even able to hear me. I hope that I don't fall down the stairs into my old office IPA and some paper towels okay and here we are again okay so before we start let's wipe the belt down a little just uh, in order to make sure that there are no residues on it so the prints don't stick on it Okay. No, I won't be putting hairspray on the belt. I don't want to, to ruin it. Okay, um, so let's give it another try. Print from SD. I will be setting the temperature of the bed or in this case the belt to 65 degrees instead of the instead of the 60 degrees that it defaults at paper leaves fluff yeah there is a bit of fluff but i think that's not going to impact the sticktivity of of the filament on the belt. The belt itself is tight. The, um, the belts from the motion system are a tiny bit loose, but in my opinion, uh, it's still totally all right. <laughs> Morten, thanks for the 50, uh, 50 Danish crowns. Master of Video of Deutsch, do you also make videos in German? Um, no, I don't make videos in German. Uh, what did Bohemansen say? The print belt. Do you mean? Maybe more heat on the bed. Yeah, I'll. I think 65 degrees going to be all right. Let's let's just see if changing the nozzle distance and increasing the temperature helped a bit. So, 65 degrees on the bed, 
The fan speed is currently set to 50%, but I think that is that this is because it's the first layer. Maybe also increase the nozzle temperature to 210 degrees Celsius because that's usually the the temperature I'm I'm I am printing uh, dust filament PLA at. Uh, let's take a look at chat. So the thing is, I could, I could uh, decrease the fan speed, but since we are basically printing at, an for, at a 45 degree angle, I don't know if that would help us. Uh, Boha Manson is asking why not tighten the belt that it prints on this belt is already really really tight I think that would not tremendously help and um, since it's not only tightening the belt but also aligning the belt I'm currently not not in the mood to uh, just run the risk run into the risk that um, the bed gets uh, out of alignment It does look all right. It does look all right. Um, let's see if I can show you the, the, the other angle. Sorry for the shakiness. All right. I do have the feeling that the nozzle now directly touches the belt because you sometimes hear a noise but otherwise I don't have the impression that the part already did it lift no I, I don't think that it lifted vacuum plate underneath the belt to keep it pulled down. I think the the print platform itself is do you say risen a little bit? It, it's a little bit higher than uh, the level of the rollers so this way the belt is always really nicely pressed against the heated bed. The right corner is strange. I think the right corner is strange due to the reason because this is always the location where the layer starts and ends. Any rumors of Prusa making a belt printer? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, if it releases again, I, I, ra 
I either will be using the Creality filament or I'll just get another spool of filaments down from my office. Uh, what slice is used for this? Uh, Black Belt slice, which is a modified version of which is a modified version of Cura. What did you say, see, Bo? This is why I suggested tightening. I think you might be able to see how the belt moves uh, because the nozzle might be too close to the print bed, but I think currently the print is still adhering very well to the print platform. I don't think that there's any any reason to tighten it anymore. Innovation, did you ever try the Hemera? Uh, would you recommend to buy it? Yes, I have three, four Hemeras. Uh, really nice extruders. They had their issues at the beginning, but I think uh, they are solved now. Not the, not the lightest ones. Um, so maybe not for really fast printing, but really good for flexibles and a nice extrusion system at a kind of low price. Is Creality Filament good? Should I buy it? Uh, I only had one roll of Creality Filament that came with my CR6SE and that was horrible. That was really horrible. It was just wet like a dog that just swam in neighbor's swimming, swimming pool and the, the winding was horrible and I had lots of problems with it so just from that one experience I, I wouldn't really recommend it just buy from a local filament manufacturer so then what filament should I get uh, well I don't know where you are coming where you are living but there are usually good local filament suppliers that you can use. <laughs> Does this printer have Z hop? Uh, yes, Scott is saying yeah it would be it wouldn't be Z hop on this machine. it would be a a y Z hop. Um, I'm really looking forward to all of the software improvements, software and firmware improvements that we are hopefully going to see in the next couple of months and years because it's belt 3D printing is kind of the same as with 5-axis 3D printing. Um, you can have a machine that's capable of doing it, but if you don't have the software that is able to generate proper G-code for it, it's just not yeah it's just not it's just not working in the end the hardware is worth nothing which filament should i buy in germany i i, I think i have already bought like for a thousand euros filament from das das filament this year uh, and i'm really happy with their materials uh, sorry for the shakiness again I'm just trying to get you a new angle. Let's see. Oh, yes.
Uh, is the sale price of the CR30 out yet? I think it's going to be around a thousand dollars, but since you usually get discounts at AliExpress, Creality Store itself, Gearbest and stuff like that, I think it's probably going to end up at around 800 euros, uh, 800 dollars, 800 money units. Alex Maximus, can you review uh, OWL filament? Uh, I have actually bought one roll of their Beware filament like I think two years ago and I used it this year for 3D printing face shields and I was kind of excited that it worked and it, it did, not, uh, did not jam my printer but others, I heard from others that they had way worse experience. <laughs> Akos is saying, yeah, no OWL filament. Yeah, I also heard really bad horror stories in the past. But as I said, my, my roll that I bought and I, well, I, I didn't get sent by them, uh, which was 10 bucks a kilo, worked kind of okay. Philip is asking, have you got experience with the master spool concept? Is the concept good in comparison with dust, dust filament refills? Uh, dust filament refills fills are not only basically, they are master spool refills. So I use them and I have pretty good experience with them. Uh, I think I think the camera view that we currently have is really nice because you can really, really well see how the material digs into the belt surface. And I think now it's really adhering well. We have 210 degrees on the nozzle and 65 degrees on the bed at the moment. The Tony Chopper is asking, are you into modding your printer? No, I, I'm usually not just because 3D printers for me are a tool and not a project just because I don't have the time to, to fiddle around with them. The 3D Moose, do you know some HBOT printer? Uh, is, isn't the Creality, uh, the CR5 a HBOT 3D printer? I know you said a local filament store, but are there any good ones online? So I have, I think I have never bought a roll in a physical shop so far. I usually shop them online and yeah, most, most of them are available through 3D Jake, Matter Hackers and the other ones that, uh, the other online filament resellers. Andrew R is asking, can you print something very flexible in the foaming TPU? Uh, so what I actually thought about is like printing an infinity pool noodle <laughs> on the Bell 3D printer with the foaming TPU. I still have like one and one and a half rolls of that material available and it might be just a really funny video printing like a, yeah, a long pool noodle with it. What's your opinion on 2.4 to 2.6 kilogram rolls? If you print a lot, yeah, use them because it's, it just saves you worrying about filament running out. And I have, for example, used them for 3D printing face shields. Um, if you regularly swap filaments because uh, you print different materials or different colors, mm, you save you usually don't really save even that much um, on, on cost. They're basically more or less the same per kilogram. So I think they only make sense if you print a lots of things and always with the same spool. Uh, at which 
speed value are you printing right now? I don't know at which speed value I'm currently printing at. I think it's pretty conservative. Um, I would say something like around 30 millimeters a second. But not sure, not sure. I haven't used um, the slicing software. This is something I'll probably be doing over the next, uh, the next days. Tito Alo is asking, what's the easiest 3D print printer? Click and print. Uh, call me a shill, but I'm a huge Prusa fan. <laughs> Those printers are for me fire and, fire and forget. Uh, I have two of them and I usually start the print and before it even started printing, I'm already out of my, my shop where the printers are and I know that the prints are going to be properly finished um, after I come back. Uh, Nick is asking, is there a limit to how long a print can be? Well, if you run out of filament, yes. Um, b well, basically no, I think. Um, it would be interesting to know from, from Scott, if he's still in the chat, if there is a numerical limit on the z-axis where, where we get in uh, into like overflow, overflow of the variable, but I think you can, you could potentially print kilometer-wise with it. Uh, looks like the left corner is lifting. It. L mm, it looks fine. It looks fine to me, to be honest. It looks fine to me. Looks good to me. <sighs> Hendrik is asking, is there any good filament maker under 300 euros or can I make one myself for under 300 euros? Um, I think there is none that you can purchase for under 300 euros, but something like the filler extruder is potential. Well, you can definitely build that one yourself for under 300 euros but it will be it will be a bit of work until you get it working properly buy an endo 3 and a ton of pla instead of a prusa depends well if you're only if you're only printing pla you might be right with that but if you're if you want to print different materials uh, the end of three is not the best choice. <laughs> so Scott, Scott just says that the mathematical limit is in the kilometers, so practically unlimited. Uh, I might might need to might need to calculate that that limit just just for the giggles. Um, What's the screen of the printer showing right now? I can... Yeah, maybe let's get you a different perspective again. So that you don't get too bored. So, let's start with... What can we see on the screen? Come on. Um, so basically, we are currently seeing on the screen the same thing that you see with any other Marlin-based 3D printer that has a monochrome screen. Um, nozzle temperature, bed or belt temperature, fan speed, um, the axis locations, the time that we are already printing, feed rate, and the name of the printer. I think the 
print is pulling on the belt itself but it did not release as far as it looks at the moment. William Steele is, say, is saying the Cura profile has a one kilometer limit. <laughs> so that's probably, that's probably plenty. Um, just, just out of curiosity, I think there are 300 meters of filament, of PLA filament on a one kilogram spool with 1.75 millimeters diameter. Hammer of Doom is asking, do you think will there be any, will there be a non-linear 3D printing slicer at some time soon? Um, this is basically the same as with the belt 3D printer. Um, if you have a nice concept, but don't have someone adopting it in, your so in a software and even improving it, um, there the idea isn't, isn't worth that much. I hope that there's going to be a non-linear slicer at some point but so far i haven't really seen any anyone investing efforts in that direction Game Boy genius is asking what's being printed the 45 degree benchy i don't think that it's the 45 degree benchy i think it's just a block with a cylinder on top but since the names on the sd card were chinese i had my issues <laughs> no Adele is saying tighten the belt uh, at some point. So spät noch am arbeiten. Working so late. Yes, that's the the hard job of a YouTuber. I don't know. I'm I'm happy to be to be with you guys uh, and I haven't been streaming for for a year or something like that. I was really nervous before I started, but, but to be honest, I'm really enjoying myself. And it's also really nice being here in my new studio. It's still very echoey in here, but I think as soon as there's proper furniture, furniture in here, it's gonna be way better. Uh, print percentage pros, uh, progress? No, it's not showing any progress. It's only showing me the elapsed time at the moment. Which is kind of sad because I don't know how long this will still take. Uh, Bo Hermansen is asking, do you think Linear Advanced will help on the corner? Um, so Scott just said um, that Linear Advanced might be helping with that problem. <sighs> Greetings from Stuttgart. Nice new place. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's it's not finished yet, but the guys that are renovating our house uh, said it's basically going to be finished at the end of next week. And at the end of next week, my four and a half week's holiday is going to start and I'll use the time to take all of my stuff that's currently still in my old office which is basically below us getting it up here renovating my old studio or my old office and have then two spaces one where like the one right here where I have my normal working desk um, a desk where I can do projects and also stream and downstairs there's going to be my tensor testing machine, 3D printers that also run during the daytime and other stuff. So just more space for me uh, to work because for the last four years I have been working in a 10 or 12 square meter office. Everything that I did or most things that I did. Uh, Tony is asking, is, uh, this is running Marlin. Yes, it is running Marlin and the nice thing is that Creality is even working together with Scott, whose last name I'm not able to pronounce, ba basically the ma main developer of Marlin, Marlin 
to get Marlin, Marlin to a state where it's properly usable for a belt 3D printer, which is really, really nice. The part is releasing itself again. No, no, it's not releasing itself. <clears throat> Um, I'm currently asking myself how I would be able to give you even a, a different perspective. Let's see. Left corner. Ah, it's gonna hold. Uh, fingers crossed. I don't want to start a, I think, fourth print or something like that. Cormac Depp is saying this isn't the new belt, this is still the cloth one. I think the new one is also still cloth, but don't quote me on that. I just thought the new belt is um, having a finer weaving. You guys can see that the corners, for example, right here, that they are curling up. But they are curling up because this is basically a 45 degree overhang. Uh, just, just keep that in mind. Um, this is the thing why it's still so hard for me to wrap around my head around, well, to wrap, around, to wrap my head around belt printers. Uh, because you need to think in a different way. A vertical edge is a 45 degree overhang in this case. So uh, let me try to give you Again, a different perspective. Just don't want to drop my camera. There we go. The new studio looks nice, Stefan. Yes, thank you. But as I said, it's still not furnished. I just took, well, the palm tree down from our living, uh, down from our living room upstairs here, uh, that it, it doesn't look that bad or that sad. Uh, so yes, yeah, some others are saying um, there is also currently another belt printer on, on Kickstarter. Um, a Kickstarter which is probably more worth being called a Kickstarter. Uh, it's from a German company, it's called the, the iFactory1 or something like that. Um, they have a pretty similarly looking machine to this one, uh, which also sells for kind of around the same price. So if you're interested in Bell 3D printers, yeah, check out the Creality CR30, but also take a look at the iFactory one. Next nice novelty 4D printing where you can turn the printing head under the print overhang. Uh, yes, that wouldn't be wouldn't be such a, a hassle to get working but again the problem in the end is the software so if you don't have software to manage a 4-axis or 5-axis 3D printer um, your hardware is worth nothing. Mm -hmm. 
So also right here, I'm really looking forward to the announcement that Ideal Maker um, made just this week that they are also going to be implementing belt 3D printing in, uh, in their slicer because that will give us another alternative for slicing parts for belt printers. Simon, thanks for the two pounds. Use the CR30 to print Skyline diffusers for the studio. Uh, I need to check what Skyline diffusers are. <laughs> but thanks for the donation. Guido is asking, isn't there a new printer which is basically a robot, a robot arm? There are a couple of robot arms that have a, a basically a hot end at the end. Chris from Chris Basement unboxed one I think last weekend and the print results looked better than I expected. Um, but again, I don't think that's, that this is a, a good alternative to the current Cartesian 3D printers. Ah, Simon, acoustic diffuser, stop echo. Yes, uh, this is actually something I, I am thinking about. As I said, the echo in here, and I'm sorry for that, is currently because there's still no furniture in here. Um, if you are interested, let me show you my new studio. Wait a second. So we still don't have a door. Uh, this is my toilet. This is my vacuum cleaner. Those are my new soft boxes. We don't even have sockets in the wall. Uh, there are still cables coming out of the roof. So yeah, it is not finished at the moment. But as I said, I'm I'm really hoping that it's going to be finished in the next couple of weeks and that I finally have more space to create content. Uh, let's see. So we, where we are currently at is... Sorry guys, um, I'm looking for another perspective. Um, so we already reached Okay, so we already reached basically the, the top of the block. Um, I think there will be a cylinder on top of that block, but I'm not sure if I got that wrong. Is it a new house or did you rebuild the place? Uh, it's an old house and we basically put a third floor on it because we need more space. I need a bigger office and we need space for our daughter. Turn the printer 45 degrees. Uh, it's probably not, not a bad... Oh, just give me a couple of more minutes. Uh, that's probably not a bad idea. Idea. Sorry, no R at the end. Ariane is saying, I guess that nylon fabric isn't suitable for high temps. It depends on the nylon that they're using. Um, I'm also not sure, but I need to check the 
the Kickstarter what materials you should be able to print on this machine because um, I would think that you need materials that are compatible with that print platform. Um, what's the current footprint of the CR30 roughly? I can not only tell you how the footprint of the machine is roughly, but I have a Zollstock, an inch stick right here. And the inch stick is telling me that it's 65 centimeters, so 650 millimeters in length and like 55 centimeters in width, including the spool holder and the screen. Gliedermaßstab. <laughs> Um, it could be only an XYZ cube, but I thought I saw a cylinder. Ah, no, there's, there is a cylinder starting. It's going to be more. It's going to be more than just, than just a cube. It's going to be a cube with, it's going to be a cube with a cylinder on top. So nothing really fancy, but I, I guess still enough for the beginning. How much? 700 I think in the Kickstarter and a thousand um, retail later. How do you English folks say to one of those measuring sticks, inch, inch sticks? <laughs> so in German we say Zollstock and the, the proper translation for that would be inch stick. A, B, C, D, E, F, G as can you print everything a normal printer could do? Um, yes and no, basically yes, uh, but different rules apply. So some models print worse on such a machine, but some other models uh, definitely uh, print better on such a machine as well. Wooden measure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying myself. I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, so, again, thanks. Thank you guys so much for joining. Let me rotate the printer by 45 degrees uh, so that I can give you even a better angle. Okay, I think from, from this angle you can even see the start of the, the cylinder that is forming. Let me move this even a little bit further. Yeah, that looks nice. Andreas Fricker sieht aus as looks like if you had a new office. Yes, I do. Come join me next week. Uh, Michael is asking, can I use PLA with this printer to manufacture 24/7 small parts? I, I guess you can if you want to do like serial production of small parts. This might be. The printer for you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to some further improvement in the Marlin software. Um, they are going to include 
kind of jump commands in the g-code so currently you only have one g-code file and when that's finished the print stops um, i think at the moment with marlin g-code it's not possible to like print something over and over and over again if you're not copying g-code after g-code after g-code but with the new g-code command m400 something correct me please um, you will be able to say at the end of a print okay jump to the beginning again and print all over um, as i have seen in uh, in black belt cura there is already the option to print a part several times but i think what that's only doing is as i said copying the g-code over and over and over again onto uh, well into a g-code file Guido is saying with octoprints and a plugin you can print a number of them you can print any number of any model uh, yeah that's really nice Tim is saying he's currently working on a bachelor thesis about non-planar 3D printing. Uh, I, I hope you share your results with the community after that because I, I would honestly be really interested to see uh, what non-planar 3D printing can do besides some basic, I don't know, nice looking models. So Scott is just saying uh, the new M808 G-code command should, be, uh, should do the trick for repeated printing once people get used to it. Uh, I don't know how it works yet, but this might be something cool. And also might give you the possibility to, for example, if you have a printer with a print platform that when it cools down nicely releases a print, you could use your print head to just knock the print off the print platform and even use a normal Cartesian 3D printer for repeated 3D printing, um, which might not be as reliable as such a system, but would still give you the option to do that maybe in the future. Egon is asking why not use a subroutine M98 I don't know what M98 currently currently does no brim no skirt no raft um, this is one of the things I'm, I'm really curious to find out what changes in terms of print settings and design rules for for such a 3d printer and one of the things that would that is also interesting do rafts work with belt 3d printers do brims work with uh, belt 3d printers i don't know because for example um a a, a brim will i i don't know I, I think it will not properly work because you can't make a continuous line on on the belt before the print starts. I don't know, as I said, I still need to wrap my head around that technology. ABCDFG is asking, does it use steppers or solvos? It's still using normal, regular stepper motor drivers. If you design a printer properly, there is no need for, for servo motors. Alright, let's change the perspective once again. I really hope that I don't mess up the print or... It's a good thing that the printer is kind of sturdy. 
I hope we don't see any any marks where I moved where I moved the print during a printer during printing. Cool. I really thought about not using the secondary camera for the stream today but now I'm so happy that I did because the the shots that we are currently getting are just beautiful. <clears throat> How long is the Uh, how's the long, uh, how long is the print going to take? I don't know. We are already 50 minutes in. I suppose it's probably going to be around another 30 minutes. Meanwhile, if you're curious, check out the new merch. Link in the description. <laughs> Merch. Are your lamps RGB spots or do you have filters in them uh, they have a filter in the front so not only blue is possible but also everything else for which I have a, a filter for and they, those are actually brand new um, I really had crappy studio lighting for the last four years and I finally purchased some really nice um, they are Chinese they're called Jin Jinbai something uh, Jinbai lamps but for what they are costing they are really professional Liam is asking opinion on core XY machines uh, if you want to print fast they can be um, a way to achieve that um, it's it always depends on what you want to do in the end. Um, it's more complex than a normal Cartesian uh, 3D printer. You have to make it, well, you have to properly design it. And, but if you do it the right way, it's, it's a nice motion system. Jan is asking, what's the lens on the second camera? Uh, that's my uh, 14 to 140 millimeter travel lens which is not the brightest, but it is great for traveling because you don't need to switch lenses all of the time. Core XY or Delta better for speed? I guess a Delta is even faster than a Core XY, um, but is even more flimsy. So it needs to be sturdy and also the print head itself needs to be really light to get nice looking prints. Spezidron is asking, do you know Bitbash Delay? No, I don't. Um, <coughs> Shadowfax is asking, I oh, don't know, sorry. Uh, the line on the cylinder is just the, is just the issue of the slicer. It could be the line that you're seeing right here. I'm not 100% sure. It could be the location where I lifted the printer. Um, I don't know where it's coming from, to be honest. How much is the layer height? So it's hard to say on which layer height we currently are at because we are 
Well, I can I can give you no. Can I give you a C coordinate? No, I, I can't. Um, I have no clue. Can it print a vase? Uh, it should potentially be able to print in vase mode. I don't know if the slicer supports that and if it really makes sense. With a thick nozzle it might be a nice way to print really long parts really fast. I think with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle it might not make too much sense because uh, well one part of the nozzle or one part one look hey or one section of the part is always touching the print platform. Uh, is there an SLS printer for hobbyists? Uh, depends uh, if you are on a smaller budget and want, don't want to spend a hundred thousand, well starting at a hundred thousand dollars on an EOS 4 Mega or something, there is Sintratech and Sintelit uh, which where their SLS machines start at five to ten thousand euros but it's still not cheap. Simon A is asking, do you have a fat nozzle for this? Uh, no, I don't, but I think it would be no issue just drilling one bigger and then use a bigger nozzle for, for the printer. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. Jax H. Down. I tried donating, but YouTube is just timing out credit card companies saying they don't have, they don't see the transaction. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I appreciate your efforts. <laughs> Iselze Baby, 11 p.m. Friday, he or she is eating salad and already looks, or already watches a print for an hour. <laughs> Is that a bad Friday or is that a good Friday? Hey Tom, just came, uh, Tom just came back from playing Rocket League. Question for Stefan, would you rather have a tilted belt printer like this or a perpendicular one for auto ejecting one? Um, since my, since I, I think the applications I would have for such a printer <sighs> I guess would not be printing really long parts. Um, I see, well, I see my use for such a printer in repeatedly serial production or repeatedly printing parts over and over. So for this reason, I would rather have a normal Cartesian printer with ejecting print platforms or something like that than a tilted or yeah, then a tilted belt printer due to the limitations I think you might have due to that configuration. But as I said, I still need to really dig into the design restrictions and also the, the tricks that you can do to uh, create equally great looking results with such a printer in comparison to a normal Cartesian 3D printer. Tom says he, think that he thinks that it would be possible to mount an Ender 3 portal on the Ender 30 platform. Um, I think it would be possible. So as I have already said before, so the heated part of the print platform is only like 15, 16 centimeters. So you probably won't be able to print really big parts on that machine but you could either increase the, um, the heated section or if you only print small parts you should be able to, to modify such a printer. And this is maybe a nice thing. Before the Kickstarter started people were asking Naomi if Creality could also um, sell the belt alone because it obviously it, it's hard to source, source such a, a belt for for example um, 
um, having a, a similar belt system on a normal Cartesian 3D printer. And uh, so if you're interested, you can also only get the belt on uh, the Kickstarter at the moment and maybe, well, do your own design with that. Uh, I'm sorry guys if I'm if I'm not able to to answer every question properly uh, for once I'm quite exhausted and also oh, there is a nice perspective and also uh, the chat is really busy today I'm really happy that so many so many joined for that stream even though some said my thumbnail is so horrible I don't think so uh, just give me one second. So we are just at the location where the cylinder is growing together or the section is growing together from the, the cylinder and the block itself. <coughs> what means CNC kitchen? CNC means computer numerical control. <coughs> a 3D printer is a CNC even though some uh, don't see a 3D printer being a CC, well, I don't know. <sighs> Which slicer was used? Um, I didn't slice this part myself. Uh, this was already on the SD card, but black belt, black belt Cura can be used to slice parts for a, um, a printer with a, tilt, with a tilted Z axis. No German streams and no German videos for the moment. Uh, not enough time for that. Tom, did I say that uh, we are actually using your filament? I, I finally bought a roll of Infinity Blue uh, uh, this week on Monday because I never had one. Carlos is saying, I miss your Prusa sous vide, please bring it back. Yeah, there, there will be a sous vide cooking back as soon as everything right here is, is finished. Ike is asking, what blue lamp do you use in the background? That's a Jinbai, Jinbai EF260 watt uh, lamp, which has color filters in the front. <laughs> Milos is saying, are you gonna use this print on the future? for some projects or you continue to work with normal FDM? Well, it, it's still FDM, it's just another, still not a, another motion system, it's another geometry. Uh, I will definitely be using this print in the future for once to investigate how the strength of tilted parts um, ends up. And um, if I have parts that I need a bunch of, uh, I guess this machine is going, is, is going to be great and I wanted to have um, a, 
Zelda Master Sword for ages, real life size. This is the printer to print it. <laughs> How about dry, direct drive on this machine? Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, I would be... I would really like to see if, if that or if the print results would benefit from that. I think the noise that I heard before and when I thought uh, this was the nozzle touching the print platform was actually only the filament spool um, wiggling around a little bit. Corom is asking what is the width of the print belt? The width of the belt is measured with my inch stick. 230 millimeters, so I'm not sure if you can use all of the 230 millimeters or if it's limited to something like 220. You can probably check the, the Kickstarter page. <laughs> the wooden measure. No, it's, it's my inch stick. <laughs> uh, how hot can you print on the belt? I am not sure. Well, we can we can print we can try that out. So in firmware, the bed temperature is limited to 115 degrees Celsius. I haven't tried it. I don't know how well this material works for something like ABS printing. They say it's called a folding ruler. For me, it's, for me, it's, it's an inch stick. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I need to. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, the new T-shirt <laughs> for for next month uh, when I have my inch stick. Action Jackson is asking, can you post a video on your design process for the polyma Polymaker hook? Uh, yes, I'm actually planning to do that as soon as the contest is over because I, I would like to see how the, the winning design looks like and then compare what I did and what the winner did and how they compare and how I also um, went along designing the hook. Chris X is asking, can you get a stress test of your new t-shirt? Uh, well, I purchased one, which was actually size small, but it's, it is so small that, I don't know, it probably was a child t-shirt. Uh, that would be, I would be probably able to destroy that one. Uh, what's the print speed now? I don't know, I think it's probably, if, around 30 to 40 millimeters a second. Anon, greetings from Oregon. Hey to Oregon. Uh, would you guess the 45 degree angle will impo improve strength or brittle? Um, I think it depends on the loading direction. Um, what does interest me is how does the strength of a part printed on a normal FDM 3D printer standing does compare to a part printed standing on such a machine where uh, now your layers are not loaded perpendicularly but they are loaded at a 45 degree angle but we'll see that I'll, I'll definitely try that out. Uh, 
<clears throat> Try to make coffee on the heated bed. Uh, we'll, we'll, we might cook a sweet steak in the next stream again. Uh, as I said, I do now finally have enough space uh, to properly stream in the future. There will be equipment in here that it's not so echo echoey anymore and I'm really looking forward to do more streams. Where do I come from? In Germany. Yeah, the print does really look nice. I have to give them that. Um, oh, sorry. Let me change the angle again. Liza, what do you think about Flashforge printers? I haven't used one of them yet. Well, my Dremel that I have is, I think, also a Flashforge, but I don't know. Thank you, Daniel, for the five Canadian dollars. Thank you for your work. Uh, appreciate you watching my work. <laughs> Tony, is that, is that triggering you? <laughs> ah, it's gonna be all right. Mipster's asking, can you even print long ABS parts on that machine with the warping issue coming from ABS filaments? I don't, I don't know. I. I need to try that out. It uh, will be interesting to see with what materials uh, that machine can work. Um, starting from PTG, TPUs, ABS, uh, nylons and stuff like that. There might be some materials that just don't want to stick um, on a belt like that. And maybe other materials that stick too well to that belt and might not uh, release at the end. Hey Ed, welcome uh, to the League of Tinkerers. Andy Lee, maybe use a hair dryer to keep the ABS warm. I don't think that a hair dryer is a good idea because um, the moving air of the uh, air dryer probably affects the print more and is is, is bad for it than uh, putting this machine maybe in a heated chamber. But as I said, I don't know how that performs. Um, yeah, it is a Bowden style hot end. The hot end reaches all the way down to the nozzle. So um, no, no really very high printing temperatures possible on that hot end. Uh, but it would be easy to switch that out to a full metal one if the machine is capable of, of printing those materials. And I don't know that. Chris, do you plan a strength test for this printer? Yes, I plan printing... Uh, printing... I plan strength tests with parts coming from that printer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really exhausted. It's already like 11.30 p.m. here in Germany. Yeah, it's nearly finished. Um, we are currently at one hour and 11 minutes. Uh, let's see if I can. That is a strange noise. Uh, 
Thank you, Cody, for the five bucks. Do you have a project in mind that uses such a long Z axis? I have the project in mind that I could print a really no long pool noodle with, with that machine, uh, with a foaming TPU, or print a master sword. Uh, yeah, the siren sound was a bit strange to be honest. I don't know where it's coming from, but obviously it's, pr it's printing a second part. I will not, <laughs> to be honest, I will not be waiting for the second part to be printed because I don't know if there is a thought. Ah. So, David, thanks for the five. David, thanks for the five dollars. I, sh I shouldn't talk to my screen. Uh, again, thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. Hello from Denver. Hello to Denver, Colorado. Colorado. Um, so previously we were talking about if there is a, um, how do you say, um, a progress bar on that screen and I said, no, it's not working. Um, it is working, but the G code contains quite a lot of those of those parts, so it didn't actually move during printing the first one. Um, now it finally moved, uh, but I guess there um, if I would finish the G code, it would be ten or more parts right here on the print platform. Uh, we will not be finishing that in the stream. Um, ABS or PTG. Um, all right. I guess what we are going to do is I will be stopping the print right now. We will be removing the part, take a look at it, and I think then we're gonna call it quits. So, I'm sorry if you need to see that, but I will stop the print. Let's, I will stop the print and rather, and rather than removing it from the belt, I will try to move the belt in that direction and see if it releases on its own. If I figure out which axis that is, but that should be the y-axis. Is it the y-axis? Move axis? No, it's not the y-axis. Is that then the x-axis? No, it's the z-axis. Uh, so as I said, um, belt printers, <laughs> belt printers <laughs> really really break my brain at the moment. So let's move it. So it's slowly moving. It's squeaking a little bit. So I don't know if you're able to see that, but up to here is the heated print platform. This part right here is still some kind of a plate, but it's not warm. I guess this is for cooling down the part and starting from that location, the belt tilts a little bit downwards and that should be the location where the part releases. So let's just move it even more. Not the fastest way to remove the part from the belt. I'm quite sure that I would be able. I am quite sure that I would be able to remove the part by hand, but I just want to know what happens. What happens when we come right to the edge? Let me move this out of the way. Let's see, let's see. What do you think what happens? Oh, 
I hear that it releases. Oh yeah, there we go. Clonk. <laughs> Great, cool. Okay, so let's take a look at the part. Focus. The thing is, the lens is unfortunately not a not a macro lens. Um, just give me one second. All right, here we go. So, how does the final result look like? So, for once we can see the, uh, the tilted axis, so we can see all of the, the print lines going in that direction. There are a couple of steps, but I'm quite sure that, there, that those happened at the moment when I just moved the printer around. Otherwise, the cylinder looks round, the, the cube looks square. I am quite impressed. The, the surfaces look pretty nice. I really can't complain. I really can't complain. I only can complain, damn it. <laughs> I only can complain that I, oh, sorry. Uh, that I screwed up um, that camera view at the moment. Um, all right. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, what does the bottom look like? The bottom... Let's see. The bottom has a really fine texture and basically represents the uh, texture of the belt itself and really nicely merges together with the rest of the part so you can't really tell in the beginning which well or you can't tell directly which was the part that was uh, facing the belt itself so not bad not bad cool I guess that's it. Uh, I'm quite excited about that machine. I assembly was really nice. Uh, the print results also look really nice. We had some uh, build platform adhesion or belt adhesion problems in the beginning, but I think that's something you can figure out. Um, the machine is on Kickstarter. Should you back on Kickstarter? just pay attention because uh, you might not always get what you want um, you might be able to get it at a little bit of a discount if you are into belt 3d printing maybe just wait until the printer is available on retail if you are looking for your first 3d printer I personally wouldn't wouldn't buy a belt 3d printer i think cartesian printers are easier to use they have a bigger community um, and are cheaper but if you have specific applications so for example if you want to print long parts or if you want to print parts over and over again this machine could be a really solid investment to be honest because before the other cheapest 3d belt 3d printer was the the black belt and that was 10 to 15,000 euros. So I'm really looking forward to seeing more on that machine itself, seeing the firmware and the software improve and um, getting the knowledge how that process works and also what you can do with it more in the minds of people. Milos, thanks for the 550 something money unit. <laughs> really appreciate that um, otherwise I guess uh, I just have to say thanks for all of you 
thanks to all of you. Sorry, I'm really messed up at the moment. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me here on the stream. Check out my merch. Cool stuff available there. And I guess, well, it's already December. Merry Christmas and uh, have a happy new year when that happens. And let's, let's just hope 2021 is going to be better. All right. I guess that's it. Uh, hit the like button, thumbs up, check merch and subscribe if you aren't.